right so we have sae3400 sae3402 and sae3420 okay what is sae3400 what is the title it says the examination the examination of prospective financial information then so far what we checked in audit and review historical financial information post mortem and now client has prepared financial statements for 31st march 2035 and they say ca please check now what is this is prospective future can i audit the future no audit is post mortem can i review no i cannot review even review is post mortem so then now what i can do i can examine i can examine right so that is why they call the examination of prospective financial information so now you know in case of sae3400 how my report will start with we have examined and you know? so interesting no we have examined audit mein likhte hain we have audited review mein likhte hain we have reviewed now what we say we have examined and here what will be the report called as any guess anybody would you like to guess the title of the report in case of sae3400 shunya shunya right 3400 would you like to guess the title of the report yes very good the examination report hai na it is going to be called as the examination report on the prospective financial information right what type of an assurance is given moderate assurance 50 50 type and a moderate assurance and again like a re, re what you say limited assurance given in case of a review even moderate assurance is required to be given in the form of a negative assurance right so even this assurance is given in the form of a negative assurance right so examination of prospective financial information right so i think let me cover 3400 and then introduce these next two standards to you okay right so now let us talk about this very important term over here prospective financial information said straight listen to me keep marking keep writing keep highlighting don't depend on any notes right the notes which i prepare yes to certain extent they will help you but how content will get engraved in your mind is only when you write in your own handwriting and now when you write it with your own hand and then the connection the signal goes to the brain only then it will create an impact otherwise it will be like you know they say no line on water line on sand and line on rock you draw line on water by the time you go ahead with the line the piche ka line the line behind goes away line on sand it stays for some time then wind comes and goes away line on rock you see even some 20 years back you would have gone to see some caves and you know people they when they go to those caves they write some heart and all of that and then they draw some arrow like this even after 20 years they go to that cave or so they still see you know or even in your college days and your school benches on the tables you would have done some you know some drawings over there some hair like this of some professor you would have drawn or so it till there today it is permanent there and a permanent record and so don't study like line on water study like lines on rock okay right so examination keep a pen in your hand your hand should keep moving you have to keep on ragdo fine in audit i can't believe students when they study audit for 2 hours they just admire the book in between they turn the page again they say how nice hmm perspective hmm nice so oh, okay hmm oh this question came in may 17 okay oh, okay okay nothing is okay with you okay prospective financial information hello future okay now 
when a company prepares financial statements can anybody quickly tell me whose prep responsibility preparation of financial statement management so what does management require when they have to prepare financial statements obviously they will have to decide upon the we discussed that in compilation right now they will have to decide upon the accounting policies correct on what basis will they decide upon the accounting policies keeping in mind the requirements of the AFRS now obviously preparation of prospective financial information also Konachi responsibility whose responsibility it is the responsibility of the management so now when management has to prepare financial statements, they need to have accounting policy. When management has to prepare prospective financial information, one thing I agree, they still need to have accounting policies, but they also need to, in the future, what you will be doing in life in 31st March 2035, where your company would be, if you want to prepare, that prospective financial information, certainly the management will have to make the I am waiting to see the correct term. The management will have to make the You are telling me around that but I am not getting the word which I am looking for. You're telling estimate, forecast, projection. No, you are. It's not that you're wrong, but it's not the word that I'm looking for. What is the management going to make whenever they have to make the prospective financial information? Management will have to make the assumptions. You know, obviously, without making an assumption, you cannot prepare the prospective financial information. Right? You cannot prepare the prospective financial information. So, 100% prospective financial information has to be based on the assumptions. Now, these assumptions which are made by the management in the preparation of prospective financial information, one, they could be the best estimate assumption or they could be the hypothetical assumptions and a hypothetical best estimate assumption what is that it is a condition which management expects to exist or an action which management expects to take that means they know next year government is going to increase the tax rate from 10 to 20 they expect this condition to exist or they know can next year we are going to increase the sales price of our product from 100 to 120. They've already put banners everywhere okay, with effect from 1st April 28, the new price of the product is 120 rupees. So it is an action which management is going to take or it is the condition which management expects to exist. That is the best estimate assumption. And hypothetical assumption is your daydreaming nothing has happened right now but only what would happen if and now agar aisa hua to and now you think oh you know if i clear in this attempt you know like like say company is the wanting a loan from the bank so bank says you prepare prospective and bring now, how much loan are they applying to the bank for? 1000 crore. So, certainly what hypothetical assumption they should make while preparing prospective that if we get the loan of 1000 crore, you know, if we get the loan of the 1000 crore, okay, right? So, assumptions could be two. It could be best estimate or it could be hypothetical. Where your prospective financial information is prepared based on the when your prospective financial information is prepared based on the best estimate assumption, it is called as a forecast. And when your prospective financial information is prepared based on a combination of best estimate and hypothetical assumptions, then that is called as a projection. Right? So generally, forecast is short term, whereas projection is long term. Right? 
many companies they go for a combination of a forecast plus a projection that means they say we are giving you a one year forecast plus we are giving a five year projection can they do only forecast yes can they do only projection yes can they give a combination of two yes you understand so prospective financial information could be either a forecast or it could be a projection when would you say that prospective information is a forecast if it is based on best estimate assumption if it is based on a combination of best estimate and hypothetical assumption then it is called as a projection right then it is called as a projection so as an auditor or as a ca when i have to examine the prospective financial information basically what i need to check is the assumptions because logic is very simple if assumptions are reasonable that means your prospective financial information is reasonable you are saying that next year we will increase sales price from 100 to 120 if this 120 is reasonable that means your prospective is also reasonable but you say no no right now our sales price is 100 crore next year we will increase the sales price of our product to 7080 rupees this is not reasonable so obviously your prospective is also not going to be reasonable right so as an auditor when you have to audit prospective examine prospective financial information you have to examine the assumptions so for best estimate assumptions ca what you are going to check that whether best estimate assumptions are they reasonable you know best estimate assumptions are they reasonable and for hypothetical assumptions ca what you are going to check whether they are consistent with the purpose of the information okay why you are preparing your projection so that you get the bank loan of 1000 crore so should you make a hypothetical assumption which says that if we get the bank loan of 1000 crore yes it is consistent with the purpose if you are applying for a bank loan that is why you are making that hypothetical assumption makes sense but you know what you why you are preparing the prospective so that you get the bank loan of 1000 crore so what assumption you should make if we get the loan of 1000 crore what assumption you have made if we acquire infosys next year it's like you know you are writing your exams in november 25 so what hypothetical assumption you said ma'am it's not hypothetical it's best estimate whatever it is okay what hypothetical assumption you should make ki if i clear my exams in november 25 and i become a chartered accountant what hypothetical assumption you are making that if i become an orthopedic surgeon in november 25 now how on earth can you become an orthopedic orthopedic surgeon by writing ca final exam Ah, you can become a surgeon of financial statements. You can't become a surgeon of the bones in the human body. No, it has to be consistent with the purpose of the information. So, one auditor, CA, you have to check for the assumptions. Are they reasonable? Are they consistent? And second, CA, you need to check that whether the prospective financial information is it properly prepared based on the assumption. so what have you said in your assumption that next year sales price will increase from 100 to 120 or if we get the loan of 1000 crore so first we check whether this assumption is it reasonable is it consistent now when right, prospective is being prepared should they apply the same assumption yes but what they are saying that they say oh next year if our sales price becomes 150 or if we get a loan of 2000 crore So you know the prospective is not properly prepared based on the assumption. Your assumption was different. You prepared it different. So these are the two main responsibilities of the CA. One to check the assumption, and second to check whether prospective has been properly prepared based on the assumption. then it says why you are giving only moderate assurance why not giving reasonable assurance why because it says it is future oriented it is speculative in nature it may or may not happen and that is the reason the ca is only giving the moderate assurance and not giving the reasonable assurance right so for assumptions are they reasonable how the drafting of the opinion is done by the ca nothing has 
come to our attention that causes us to believe that the assumptions do not provide a reasonable basis that means what they are reasonable but moderate assurance negative assurance has to be given a moderate assurance has to be given in a negative form so nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the assumptions do not provide a reasonable basis and you, know, you give a negative assurance Right, you give the negative assurance. Okay, again in SAE 3400, what we are going to do? Our part, acceptance, planning, performing and the reporting. Right, we are going to discuss about accepting the engagement, then the procedures, right? So examination procedures, the other procedures are called and then you have the examination report, right? So that's the reporting part, okay? Right. So standards on the assurance engagement. So right now I'm just discussing the first one with you, the examination of prospective financial information. Right. So it's based on the assumption. And what did I say? If it is based on best estimate assumption, it is called as a forecast. And if it's based on a combination of best estimate and hypothetical, it is called as a projection right it is called as a projection right so examine and report on the prospective financial information including examination procedure for best estimate and hypothetical right this does not apply to you have given the vision of your company which is your forecast for the future it says it does not apply to prospective prepared in general or narrative terms there has to be balance sheet profit and loss prepared for the future Right? So, it does not apply to general or the narrative terms. And they say they use the word auditor over here, though it is an examination. Right? They use the term auditor over here. Right? What type of an assurance is given? I told you they give only the moderate assurance. Why? Because it is future oriented. It is speculative in nature. And you cannot give the same level of assurance which you give for the historical financial information. Okay? Right. You know, in ethics, like where is my chart over here, right? We have the second schedule, part one. And a second schedule. In that part one, there are 10 clauses. And in that 10 clauses, you no, know, there is a clause three. And a clause three of part one of second schedule. I'm talking about 312. What does 312 say? A CA will be guilty of professional misconduct if he permits his name that means he's allowing don't worry use my name and a permits his name to be used in connection with in what connection estimate of earnings contingent upon future future transaction estimate of earnings which are contingent upon future transaction so estimate of earning contingent upon future in simple language it means prospective financial information okay in the future how much money we will earn contingent upon future transaction that means based on the assumption so it says ca you will be guilty of professional misconduct if you allow your name to be used in connection with this estimate of earnings contingent upon future transaction in the manner which may lead to the belief that the CA vouches for the accuracy of the forecast. And the vouches for the accuracy of the as accuracy of the forecast. Right, so CA is telling that yes, this year the revenue of the company is 100 crore. I am telling you 100% guarantee that next year the revenue of the company will be 150 crore. That much certainty even God cannot have. And nobody can give. CA says, no, no, I vouch for the accuracy of the forecast. That this is what will happen in the company in the future. It says CA out. You are guilty of professional misconduct under 312. So, as the CA, if you vouch for accuracy of forecast, out. But does that mean that I cannot do any work for forecast? It says you can. But you need to follow the guidelines of SAE 3400. What did 3400 tell you? Don't be 
very smart by giving absolute assurance, vouching for accuracy of forecast, give moderate assurance. And four conditions. What are the four conditions? Sources of information, basis of forecast, major assumption should be disclosed and you should not vouch for the accuracy of forecast. Right? So, what are the four conditions? One, what does it say? Three, one, two. CA, if you vouch for accuracy of forecast, you are out. But what is allowed as per SAE 3400, if you give the moderate assurance and you also give the sources of information, okay, on what basis this assumption has been made, then you also give the basis of the forecast. Then all the assumptions have been disclosed in the prospective financial information. And you very clearly write in your report, examination report, that we are not vouching for the accuracy of the forecast. Then it says CA no problem. Then you can associate your name with a forecast. But you cannot, but you cannot vouch for the accuracy of the forecast. If you vouch for accuracy, you are out under 312. Right? So that's what they have discussed over here. Can professional accountants be associated with forecast? Yes. But if they vouch for accuracy, they will be out. But can they put their name? Yes. Subject to four conditions. SBMA. And the sources of information, basis of forecast, major assumption and should not vouch for the accuracy of the forecast. Okay, right. So that is where they talk about the management responsibility and CA can be associated name with the forecast. Okay, now duties of the CA who is examining the prospective information. So what did I tell you? For best estimate assumptions, you will check, are they reasonable? But how they write, are they reasonable? They are not unreasonable. Minus, minus, plus. So best estimate assumptions are not unreasonable. Hypothetical are consistent. Then prospective is properly prepared based on the assumption. Then all the assumptions have been disclosed. And also they are on a consistent basis with the historical financial statements. That means consistent that up to 2025, you know, the completed financial year, say the company was using the FIFO method for valuation of inventory. Now, when they are preparing the prospective for 31st March 2035, it has to be consistent with the historical financial statements. And in case if there is a change in accounting policy, retrospective effect quantified and discussed. Otherwise, it has to be consistent. Otherwise, it has to be same. It's still now we've been following FIFO. Future also we continue to use FIFO unless and until you have a plan to change the accounting policy. Right? So these are the responsibilities of the CA. And the best estimate are they reasonable? Hypothetical are they consistent? Then whether prospective is properly prepared, all assumptions have been disclosed and they are consistent with the historical financial statements. Right, then what type of an assurance is given? I already told you it's a moderate assurance. So because it is future oriented and speculative in nature. Right, so this is the duties of the CA. So this could be a separate question in your exam. And the duties, okay. Then after the duties, you have the acceptance of the engagement. Okay, CA, uh, the client is calling CA and told CA, okay, CA, we have prepared some prospective financial information. Uh, will you please come and give us an examination report? And they have prepared because management's responsibility to prepare and they are telling CA, uh, we have prepared this. Can you give us a report on the prospective? So CA says, okay, let me think whether I can accept this engagement. So CA asked them, for what period have you prepared prospective? They say, you know what we did one time only prepared for 31st March 2100. So that no problem again and again. We made only one assumption. Okay, next year if we acquire Infosys. CA says, thank you. But I am not going to accept this engagement. Why? Look at the period covered. Right? Look at the intended use. They want to loan from the bank. And they are saying next year if we acquire Infosys. Right? So intended use, then the information, will it be general or limited distribution? Then the nature of the assumption, okay, next year we acquire Infosys and the elements to be included in the information. 
right so acceptance of the engagement we have to consider the time the period the intended use the nature of the assumption and the elements to be included in the information and if you think that oh my god these assumptions are clearly unrealistic and next year if we acquire infosys next year if we get funding of you know or 200 crore from the shark tanks or something like that it's a clearly unrealistic it says see don't accept such an engagement and if you've already accepted withdraw withdraw and if you accept the engagement then you issue the engagement letter right then you issue the engagement letter right so that is acceptance of the engagement right that's regarding the acceptance of the engagement okay next we now talk about the examination procedure are you all with me You know, earlier that, you know, ancient times, I can say that, that uh, rather in the starting phase of my career, when I started, uh, I decided one more format of the batch called as marathon batch. And it's a marathon batch. It's I've nowadays deleted the word revision also from it. But ideally, it is supposed to be a marathon revision batch. So, you know, in those ancient times, I used to think that, okay, it's like students already have studied everything. And what I simply need to do is I need to revise with them, like, you know, just for them to brush up with the subject. But then it was such a realization that it has stayed with me till today. You know, after so many years also, that realization has dawned upon me. Okay, don't go by the name. And you know, though it is called marathon or it is called fast track or revision or booster or whatever, it is just that you have to, you know, teach the student just at a different speed. And it's just that you have to tell them. And if I tell you, oh, you know, these are the examination procedures. No, no, you have, we are discussing it over here. You understand? No. Right. So, anyways, by hook or by crook, you become a CA. That's important. Okay. So, examination procedure. I have to check whether the assumptions are reasonable. Whether hypothetical assumptions are they consistent. How can I say whether assumptions are reasonable unless and until I don't know the entity? So, one, the knowledge obtained during any previous engagements right so the knowledge regarding the client's business like so it's the koc then along with the client's business i also need to look into the stability of the entity's business like you know some businesses like baiju's classic example it flourished during the COVID times and they did so much of advanced revenue booking like three year car revenue from a student they booked it in one year only Right? So that was not sustainable in the long run. You know, that particular model of the ASB was not sustainable. So based on that, they prepare prospective. It was not right. right. So the stability of the entity's business. So one, knowledge of the business. Second, the stability of the business. Right. Then after that, see, preparing historical financial statements is quite a regular affair. Okay. But preparing prospective requires more talent. So you check the management competence in preparing the prospectus and similarly for auditor also doing audit of historical regular. But you know checking prospectus it requires more competence. So management competence and also engagement team experience in doing such type of an engagement. So one is knowledge of the client. Second is the stability of the client's business. Next two is the management competence and the engagement team experience then after that we talk about the likelihood of the material misstatement lmm okay whether prospective financial information is there any chance of material fraud or error then to what extent the prospective is affected by the management's judgment and okay next year we will increase sales price from 100 to 120 it is the judgment of the management Tax rate will increase from 10 to 20. That's not a judgment of the management. That is decided by our finance minister. You understand? No, but the, the sales price will increase from 100 to 120. That is the judgment of the management. And the most important part of your examination is the sources of information underlying the assumption. Okay, on what basis you are saying this 1000 crore? On what basis you are saying this uh, 120 rupees? Next, the sources of information. Right, so these are the six points eh, which we have for the examination procedure. Right, the examination procedure. 
ओके नाउ क्लाइंट हैज प्रिपेयर्ड दिस प्रोस्पेक्टिव फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन व्हाट आई नीड टू चेक इन द प्रेजेंटेशन डिस्क्लोजर दिस इंस्टीट्यूट हैज आस्क्ड इन वन ऑफ द एग्जाम Okay, what I need to check in the presentation disclosure of this prospective one whether the prospective financial information is informative and not misleading. Second, all the accounting policies have been disclosed. Third, all the change in accounting policies have been disclosed. Then, fourth, the assumptions have been disclosed and clearly distinguishing whether it is a best estimate or whether it is a hypothetical assumption. Right. So one. prospective information should be informative and not misleading second accounting policy change in accounting policy next the assumption should be disclosed next the date on which the prospective information has been prepared and also the basis of establishing a points in a range like you know one management can say in next year the revenue of the company will increase to 120 crore or they can say next year the revenue of the company will be between 115 to 125 crore so when they say 120 crore that's a point estimate and when they say 115 to 125 that's a range so if a range has been created the basis of establishing the points in a range even that basis has to be given right so that is presentation and disclosure once this prospective should be informative and not misleading second accounting policy disclosed change in accounting policy disclosed assumption should be adequately disclosed then the date on which this prospective has been prepared and the basis of establishing the points in a range right so that's another important question for the presentation and disclosure and then finally coming to the report right title address the identifying the information sae right the management's responsibility then the restricted distribution of the report examination procedure negative assurance that is your moderate assurance right then the opinion right that it is properly prepared based on the assumptions i told you no one whether the assumptions are reasonable and second whether it is properly prepared based on the assumption then a caveat caveat means what a warning okay this is prospective what is projected over here may happen or may not happen right so you are giving a caveat a warning to the users and then you have a signature place and date right then you have the signature place and the date okay right so that is our discussion for the sae 3400 which is for the examination of prospective financial information 3402 we'll come to that later but right now coming to the discussion for the sae 3420 which is regarding the assurance reports on the compilation of the pro forma financial information included in the prospect okay right so coming to the next one so we've completed with 3400 now moving on to another one 3420 not 3402 that i'll come to it later okay 3420 what is 3420 assurance engagement to report on what compilation of what pro forma financial information where this pro forma financial information is included in the prospectus means something related to the ipo or so of the company Right, so obviously, first thing on earth in SAE three four two zero, we have to understand this term called as the pro forma financial information. That is P F F I, assurance engagement to report on the compilation of pro forma financial information included in the prospectus. okay so say example hai na company a hai na there is a company a right and say this company a prepared its uh, financial statements for 31st march 2025 are you listening to me 
how many of you know that ma'am has finished 3400 she said that 3402 uh, she will take later and right now she is discussing 3420 oh okay so now this yes, company a it has prepared its financial statement for 31st march 21 okay now on 30th june 25 this company a acquired another company say company b and then they acquired they purchased another company called as company b when did they purchase 30th june okay so now next year financial statements will be prepared hai na? next year 31st march 2026 that time this during the year what acquisition took place will be accounted for because it took place on 30th of june okay so when has the event or transaction taken place on the date of the balance sheet or at a later date is it taken place on the date of the balance sheet or has the event or transaction taken place at a later date? It has taken place at a later date. So when did you acquire that company? On 30th of June. But did you acquire it on that date? Yes. Did you acquire it as on 31st of March? No. When did you acquire it? Three months later. You acquired it on 30th of June. Okay. So now, but had we dreaming? Had we acquired this company as on 31st March 2025 only, then how our financial information would have looked like is what is called as pro forma financial information. An event or transaction which has taken place at a later date, but had it been taken place at an earlier date, how the financial information would look like is what you called as pro forma financial information. So you acquired the company on 30th June. That is the reality. But had you, had you acquired this company on 31st March, then how you financial statements on 31st March would have looked like is pro forma financial information. So say right now on 31st March the assets of your company are 100 crore. So in your balance sheet assets are shown as 100 crore. Then this company say it has had assets of 20 crore. Obviously I acquired it on 30th of June. But had I acquired it on 31st of March, then on 31st of March, only my balance sheet asset side would have looked like 120 crore. That is pro forma financial information. What is the formula for pro forma financial information? Unadjusted financial information plus pro forma adjustment is equal to pro forma financial information right unadjusted that means your original 31st march ka financial statements example what is the pro forma adjustment it is the event or transaction which has taken place at a later date but had it been taken place at an earlier date selected for the purpose of the presentation and whatever is the resulting amount that information that is the pro forma financial information. Obviously, whose responsibility to prepare this PFFI? Whose responsibility it is? To prepare this pro forma financial information, 100% it is the responsibility of the management. But here the management is referred to as the responsible party. So generally what we say management's responsibility. Here what we have to say responsible party's responsibility. Generally we say now management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility. Your management is referred to as the responsible party so we call it as responsible parties responsibility okay now to this unexisted financial information you are doing the pro forma adjustment which gives you the pro forma financial information so this pro forma adjustment which you are doing is called as the applicable criteria right so in s a 810 we had something called as applied criteria in SA 810, 
See, in SA 800, we had AFRF. 805 also AFRF. 810, we had the AC. You remember AC, we had the applied criteria. Right? Then right now in 3400, we had the assumption on which the prospective is prepared. Now in 3420, what do we have? We have the applicable criteria. Right? The applicable criteria. What is the applicable criteria? The pro forma adjustment. What is the pro forma adjustment? The event or transaction which has taken place at a later date had it been taken place at an earlier date. Clear everyone? Do you understand? Yes, Institute has also come up with an exposure draft of 3410, greenhouse gas statements. But so far it's only exposure draft, so you better become a CA before that comes. Okay, right. So anyways, we are talking about the assurance engagement to report on the PFFI. Right? So reasonable assurance. Now here what type of assurance? Reasonable. In case of 3400, it was the moderate assurance. Here it is the reasonable assurance. What the practitioner has to give a report on the compilation of the pro forma financial information. And what is pro forma financial information? Refers to financial information shown together with adjustment to illustrate the impact of an event or a transaction on the unadjusted financial information as if the event had occurred or transaction taken place at an earlier date. That's what I told you. UFI plus PFA, unadjusted financial information plus pro forma adjustment is the pro forma financial information, right? So demonstrate the effect of a transaction, impact of a significant event or transaction on the unadjusted financial information, right? So you are going to become, I don't know when, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know when means, I don't know when your attempt is. Okay, so say if you become a CA in November 2025, then you think that, oh, had I become a CA in May 25? like that that is pro forma financial information right that is pro forma financial information what is the objective reasonable assurance and to give a report then compilation of the pro forma financial information whose responsibility responsible party because what did i tell you management over here is referred to as the a responsible party. So what are the three steps involved? Identify the source of the UFI, then make the PFA pro forma adjustment and then presenting the PFF. See, once I tell you the gist, I hope rest of the content over here is making sense. You keep it in your mind. Pro forma financial information. What is the formula? Un adjusted financial information plus the pro forma adjustment. What is the adjustment? It is the event or transaction. Had it been taken place at an earlier date, that will give you the pro forma financial information. Right. So what you have to do for the UFI, you have to check the source. Then you have to do the pro forma adjustment and then check the presenting, the result of the PFFR. Right? So, what is the nature of the practitioner's responsibility? Practitioner means CA. You know, the auditor, the CA's responsibility is to check whether the pro forma has been compiled by the responsible party in accordance with the applicable criteria. Like, you know, in SA 810, what do we say? That summary financial statements have been compiled by the management, have been derived by the management based on the applied criteria. So, the criteria applied to the audited financial statements. So, now in SAE 3420, what does it say? CA, you have to check whether the pro forma financial information has been compiled by the responsible party in accordance with the applicable criteria. Right? In accordance with the applicable criteria. Right? So, compiled in accordance with the applicable criteria. And then you talk about acceptance, planning and performing, written representation, forming of opinion and preparing the report. Right? So, more or less are APR. Acceptance, planning, performing and the reporting. Right? Acceptance, planning, performing and the reporting. 
ओके सो नाउ योर क्लाइंट इज टेलिंग सीए सीए वी प्रिपेयर प्रो फॉर माई फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन विल यू गिव रिपोर्ट नो यू इन योर लाइफ for the first time i have heard the term pro forma financial information from the when the client said it you don't have any idea what this is but client asked ca will you check you say yeah yeah no problem i come from tomorrow and when you are immediately saying i'll come from tomorrow come from tomorrow do you have the competence do you have the capability to perform the engagement you know competence naam ki koi cheez hoti hai na nikle bag leke The moment somebody asks, "Are you free? Are you? Can you come for tea?" Nickel. Not seeing, I'm in the middle of a discussion. I have my exams coming up. I can't go for that cousin's wedding. I can't give priority to other things. No. Moment anybody says, "Yeah, come, come." Hey, attempt institute every six months exam form come out here. Yeah. What's the big deal? Huh? You'll say, "Ma'am, last three days there is a change in the conditioning of our mind." is that so right is there a little bit of the shaking up somebody who is like you know being little uh, commanding on you and not pampering you laad nahi kar raha hai koi what i will get I will get a mail from you, no, saying that, ma'am, I cleared. I am a chartered accountant. That's all what I want. Little bit fear, increased stamina. Ah, very good. You don't know what potential is there in you, you know. They say, you know, a one, ah, uh, uh, you know, in one apple there are a few seeds, but you don't know in one seed how many apples are there. You know that how many more trees can be generated out of that one seed of the apple. Yes, you we you know you need to just channelize. You just need to set your focus right. Okay, right. So now we are talking about the competence and capability, right? So then you have to check the competence capability. Then now what they say? Okay, you say yeah yeah I know pro forma RT ma'am class I did she taught us over there so you know. Then you ask client client what is your applicable criteria? They say no no if. Acquire Infosys on thirty first, thirtieth of June. And you say, my God, you know, you have one target in life: purchase Infosys. Now, what does it say? Whether the applicable criteria is it suitable, or will it be misleading for the purpose for which it is intended? Hey, now, so one, do you have the competence capability? Second, whether the applicable criteria is it suitable? Something like acceptability of AFRS. This is acceptability of the applicable criteria, rather suitability of the applicable criteria. Okay, whether the applicable criteria is it suitable? Right. Then you say, okay, applicable criteria also suitable. Then the wording of your opinion will likely to lead to forming of the opinion. So, what wording will you use for expressing your opinion? Right. Then it talked about the sources from which the unadjusted financial information has been extracted. Right, because there are three pieces of information: no unadjusted financial information, the pro forma adjustment, and then the pro forma financial information. Right, so the source from which the unadjusted financial information has been obtained, then if it has been audited, whether there is any modification, emphasis of matter or other matter paragraph in those reports, right? Then the historical one is when the unadjusted financial information has been audited or reviewed. Another might be the situation when that historical financial information has never been audited or reviewed. then you have to obtain the understanding of the entity next one that event or transaction could have never been audited or reviewed so again you have to obtain an understanding of the financial reporting practices right so what is point number 1 competence and capability second suitability of the applicable criteria third the wording of your opinion four sources of the unadjusted financial information and has it been audited or reviewed when it has never been audited or reviewed then understanding when that event or transaction has never been audited or reviewed then you again need see again you are doing line by line addition na 
कि दिस कंपनी ए का फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट यू आर यू नो वॉट यू से कंसोलिडेटिंग दैम टाइप विद कंपनी बी सो यू कैन डू लाइन बाय लाइन एडिशन ओनली वेन दर इज यूनिफॉर्म अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसी otherwise it's not possible so that's why it says you need to look into the financial reporting practices and then obtain an agreement from the responsible party right so now what agreement do we take from the responsible party to adequately disclose the applicable criteria responsible party your responsibility compiling pro forma as per the applicable criteria your responsibility providing the practitioner with all information additional information access and needed for the purpose of the engagement all that is the responsibility of the responsible party okay so one the pro forma financial information describing the applicable criteria then compiling the pro forma as per the applicable criteria and providing the practitioner with all information additional information and unrestricted access whose responsibility it is the responsible party's responsibility right so competence capability suitability of applicable criteria wording of opinion audited or reviewed never audited or reviewed event or transaction never audited or reviewed and then the responsibility of the responsible party right then the responsibility of the responsible party and now we come to planning and performing right so again in planning and performing point number 1 whether the applicable criteria is it suitable right so suitability of the applicable criteria then again it says you will have to determine the materiality then understanding of how the information has been compiled then the source of the ufr unadjusted financial information then it might be that this ufr has never been audited or reviewed right then again the extract of where from where this ufr has been obtained so these three points which we have over here are for the ufr right so first two points is suitability of applicable criteria and also the materiality next point compiled right the pro forma financial information how it has been compiled the source of the uf ufi then it has never been audited or reviewed and also how whether it has been properly extracted from that source then after you know what is the source and is it properly extracted from that source then you come to the pro forma adjustment so pro forma adjustment is the event or transaction right which had it taken place at an earlier date and again you need to check consistent with the afrf of the reporting entity right so this you need to check it for the pro forma adjustment right the event or transaction and also the consistency with the afrf and then what does it say evaluate the presentation so now we come to the third point right the presentation and read the other information that is like your 720 other information right so read the other information right so can this type of case study questions be coming in the exam yes right procedure so what is procedure number 1 suitability of the applicable criteria then after that determining the materiality level then coming to the ufr right that how it has been compiled the source of ufi never been audited or reviewed and whether it has been properly extracted from that source then pro forma adjustment the event or transaction and the afrf consistency and then you evaluate the presentation and read the other information right and then it says ca you have to obtain the written representation that management it is your responsibility to compile as per the applicable criteria and then if it is compiled as per the applicable criteria unmodified opinion say it is not compiled as per the applicable criteria you suggested the changes but management does not agree responsible party either you withdraw or you seek the legal advice right so may not preclude the publication again you may put emphasis of matter paragraph or so and then finally coming to the report right so title address the identify the pffi source of ufi period then the applicable criteria responsible party's responsibility practitioner's responsibility right the practitioner's responsibility we perform our engagement as per 3 4 Two zero, and then after that, the reasonable assurance, right, that the pro forma adjustments, right, give appropriate effect, and it is appropriately reflected, right, it is appropriately reflected, and then the signature place and date, right. 
right? Then the signature place and date. So at least minimum memory of SA E3420, what you need to have is unregistered financial information plus pro forma adjustment is pro forma financial information. And pro forma adjustment is nothing but the event or transaction. And that event or transaction is nothing but the applicable criteria and what as a CA you need to check is the suitability of the applicable criteria and this unregistered financial information you have to check the source right then this unregistered financial information may be audited or reviewed or it may not be audited or reviewed similarly this pro forma adjustment also may be never been audited or reviewed right and then you evaluate the presentation of the pro forma financial information whether it has been compiled in accordance with the applicable criteria right so that is SAE 3420 right the assurance engagement to report on the compilation of pro forma financial information included in the prospectus okay right now we have one standard left over there Right, so we've completed 3400, which is examination of prospective financial information. Then 3420, so this is PFI, this is PFFI, and now prospective financial information. Then this is pro forma financial information, and now we are going to talk about 3402. But I need to discuss 3402 along with SA402. Right, along with SA402. Right, so now what you need to do for the next 10 minutes or you know 7-8 minutes of what I discuss, you need to play, pay complete attention to what I'm saying so that you get the gist of 402 and 3402. Kind of 402 and 3402. 402 is in your chapter number 2 and 3402 is in your chapter number 11. Right, it's in your chapter number 11. Okay, right. So, let's try to understand. Yes, everyone, have you written? Next heading, 3402. And let's try to, what is applicable criteria, right? So, applicable criteria, it is what you say, the event or transaction, that criteria which is going to be applied while preparing pro forma. They are saying we want to prepare pro forma. So, what criteria they are going to apply? So, they say this event or transaction had it taken place at an earlier date. So, the pro forma adjustment is the applicable criteria. The pro forma adjustment, that is your applicable criteria. Okay, right. So, now coming to SAE 3402. So, example, let us say we are CA Sparkle and we are doing the audit of the financial statements of Growth Limited. Okay, and now as a part of our audit of Growth Limited, are we also going to check the salary expenditure just as an example? Not that that's the only one, but as an example. Okay, are we going to check the salary expenditure of growth also? Yes. But now the salary processing, they are not doing on their own, growth limited. They have outsourced it to a company called as Sabir Limited. Okay, now obviously as a part of my audit of growth, I want to check salary also. But now the salary ka data, is it there at growth? No, it is there with Samir Limited. So, as a part of my audit of growth, will I have to use the work done by Samir Limited? Yes. So, in that case, CS Sparkle, you have to follow SA402. What is 402? Audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization. Right. So, in my example, Growth Limited is the user entity. Why user entity? It is using the services of a service organization. So, Samir Limited is a service organization. Right. Then, CS Sparkle is the user auditor because he is doing the audit of the entity which is using a service organization. Okay. 
right so when user auditor has to use the work of service organization he has to follow 402 okay now if as a part of the audit of growth limited will ca sparkle like to check the controls toc of the salary controls control testing of salary yes but now these salary controls are they there at growth no they are there at samir right so now the ca sparkle says okay i'm going to samir limited to do the control testing no samir limited is an outsourcing specialist they have hundreds and hundreds of clients for whom they do the salary processing if each of the clients send their auditor okay, okay auditor you want to check control go to samir go to samir you can do control testing there Samir Limited says, what is this? 100 people doing control testing of our system. He says, everybody go back home. We will appoint a CA, say CA Joy. Okay. And from the CA Joy, we will get a ready-made TOC report prepared. And this report, we will give it to our clients. And clients, you give it to your auditor. Makes sense, no? Rather than 100 people coming 100 times and doing the TOC of the same system, better they appoint one CA, get the report prepared and share it with 100 people. Okay, so when service organization appoints a CA to give a TOC report on the controls at service organization, then the CA Joy is called as the service auditor and CA Joy needs to follow SAE 3402. Right, SAE 3402. What is SAE 3402? It is assurance report on the controls at a service organization. Right, assurance report on controls at a service organization. That means CA has been appointed to issue a report on the controls at the service organization, TOC report. Okay, this TOC report, which is issued by service auditor on the controls at service organization, it could be a type 1 report or it could be a type 2 report. It could be a type 1 report or a type 2 report. Type 1 report is the report on the description and design of the controls at service organization. And type 2 report is a report on description, design and operating effectiveness of controls at service organization. Right? So like type 1 report, I can say it's half TOC and type 2 report, I can say it's full TOC. Full controls ka report. So if user auditor gets a type 1 report, he still has to go to Samir to check for the OE, operating effectiveness. But if user auditor gets type 2 report, no need to go. You've got full TOC report. Right? So description, design and description, design and operating effectiveness. If service auditor has been appointed to give a report on description, and design then that is type 1 and if service auditor has been appointed to give a report on description design and operating effectiveness of controls at service organization then that is type 2 report right so now whether you are appointed who you service auditor to give a report on controls at service organization whether to give a type 1 report or whether to give a type 2 report that is called as the suitable criteria right that is called as the suitable criteria right okay right so here in 3402 you have a concept of the suitable criteria so applied criteria, applicable criteria and now we have the suitable criteria. Okay, if you are appointed for a type 1, then what you have to give a report on description, okay, whether there is a fair description of the system and whether the controls have been suitably designed to achieve the control objective. If it is type 2, then Fair description of the system is what you have to mention about. 
then whether controls are suitably designed and whether the controls have been operating effectively throughout the specified period. Because you know design as at a particular date. Okay, today what is the design of the control? But operating effectiveness is over a period of time. Okay, how the controls have been operating. And regarding this service auditor, you have to give a oh, oh, right? service auditor, you have to give a reasonable assurance. Right, service auditor, you again in case of this engagement have to give a reasonable assurance. Right, so type 1 report and then you have the type 2 report. Okay, right, so I will have to go, yes, reverse because we've come to 3420. Right, so just give me a moment. Okay. All right. So rather I'll directly get you to the contents of the report only, right? So it will give you a fair idea of what I'm talking about, right? Service auditor's opinion, you know? service auditor, CA Joy. In case of type 1 report, description of the system, does it fairly present and whether the controls are suitably designed for type 1. For type 2, description, is it fairly presented? Then after that, whether the controls are suitably designed and then because it is type 2, what does it say? The controls have been operating effectively throughout the specified period. And the controls have been operating effectively throughout the specified period. Right? So type 1 report and then you also have the type do report, right? So type 1 report is a report on the description and design. Whereas type 2 report is a report on the description, design and the operating effectiveness of the controls. Okay, right. So if I come to the beginning of this particular standard, right? SAE 3402. It says it complements SA 402 because 402 is regarding the user auditor and 3402 is regarding the service auditor, right? And again, what does it say? To give a report on the controls at service organization and also give a report on the controls other than those relating to the user entity, right? So it could be related to the user entity or general a report on the controls at the service organization okay right now over here we have an important discussion right so this I have already discussed with you suitable criteria description design and then the operating effectiveness of the control right so description design and operating effectiveness that is the suitable criteria right what is the type 1 report description of the system and then whether the description is fairly presented Right, whether the description is fairly presented and also whether the controls are they suitably designed and then to give a reasonable assurance and type 2 again controls are they fairly presented suitably designed and also operating effectively throughout the specified period okay right so now what does it say how such an engagement can be proceeded with Right. So, when you are appointed for this, uh, a what you say, this assurance reports on controls, again, do you need to comply with ethical requirements? Yes. Including independence? Yes. Why? Because you are giving an assurance, a reasonable assurance. Only for SRS 4400 and 4410, independence was voluntary. Rest all other cases, ethical requirements must. Then you have to determine the management TCWG from whom you will request the written representation. Then again before you know the client is telling you CA please give us a type 1 report, type 2 report immediately no going. First what you have to think do you have the competence and capability. Right, then criteria to be applied, the suitability of the suitable criteria, whether the suitable criteria is it acceptable or any change in the scope of the engagement. Right, so assessing the suitability of the criteria, then determining the materiality. So even in this type, like how we do in an audit, here also we have to determine the materiality, then obtain an understanding of the service organization system, that is the KOC. 
because without that you can't say whether the system is fairly described presented whether it is suitably designed so first you have to obtain an understanding then evidence regarding the description evidence regarding the design and evidence regarding the operating effectiveness right so so far what does it say starting with the erii then determining management tcwg then acceptance of the terms of engagement after acceptance rather along with engagement you also have to assess the suitability of the criteria then after that you determine materiality and koc once your background work is done then you start with the evidence regarding description evidence regarding design evidence regarding the oe and in addition to that it says you can also ask understand the internal audit function because you know internal auditor even they are giving a report on internal control but their report is only for the findings okay, whether the controls are found to be weak or so but this report in the toc report you have to give whether the controls are fairly presented are they suitably designed are they operating effectively right so service auditor and internal auditor are two different roles though their nature of work is overlapping but the purpose is different then the service auditor and the internal auditor so can you use the work of the internal audit function yes and also you need to ask for the written representations from the management of the service organization and consider the subsequent events right so some 11 points we put over there okay regarding the procedures right the performing of the engagement and then we come to the reporting right now if i look at the point over here what chart i was making over here right so what we said we have user auditor user entity service auditor service organization then we have the type 1 report and type 2 report there may be a situation where the service organization so much overloaded with work that they further outsource some part of their work say to abc limited which i now refer to as the sub service organization and a sub service organization okay so now ca joy i want a good answer ca joy has been appointed to give a toc report on the controls at samit ca joy has been appointed to give a toc report on the controls at samit but now is samit doing all the work no they further outsource some part of their work to a sub service organization so will ca joy while giving a toc report on the controls at samir also consider the controls at abc limited you know whether controls at sub service organization will those also be considered by the service auditor controls at sub service organization will they also be considered by the sub service auditor they may be considered or he may not consider if service auditor consider the control at sub service organization while giving a report on the controls at service organization that is called as the inclusive method and if service auditor says i am going to only report on controls at service organization not at sub not at sub service organization then that is called as the carve out method so he says 80% controls there at samir i am only going to check these for 20% i am not going to check so then for those 20% controls sub service organization will have to appoint a sub service auditor right so three more definitions four more definitions over there inclusive method then you have the carve out method then the sub service organization and the sub service auditor right so so far what we saw user auditor user entity service auditor service organization type 1 report type 2 report inclusive method carve out method sub service organization sub service auditor okay and one last one okay whose salary is it whose salary is being processed in my example growth limited who is processing it samir limited so work of growth is being done by 
Samir Limited. If I give some part of my work to another entity to do, will I not keep some control over the work done by others? Well, it's my work ultimately. No, I've just outsourced it. So, will I not have some control over the work done by Samir Limited? Yes. So, those controls are called as the complementary user entity controls. C-U-E-C. -E controls exercised by user entity on the work done by service organization. So, once upon a time, you know, controls exercised by Sonia Gandhi over... Okay, those are examples of the complementary user entity controls. Right, controls exercised by user entity on the work done by service organization. Okay, and just last two, three points which I want to tell you for 402. Generally, the question comes in the exam that payroll processing has been outsourced, bookkeeping has been outsourced. As an auditor, you have to understand the nature of work done by the outsourcing agency. How do you understand? So, you go for the audit and you come to know, oh, my client doing full outsourcing, not doing any work on their own, full work outsourcing. So now I have to understand the nature of services provided by the service organization. Yes, SA 402. So what I need to understand for the nature of services provided by the service organization, the significance of the services provided by the service organization. Second, the materiality of the transaction. Third, the degree of interaction between user entity and service organization. And last one is the relationship between user entity and service organization. So, S-M-I-R. And that is why the name of our service organization was Samir Limited. Why Samir Limited? Because we wanted the S-M-I-R. So, whenever you come to know, oh, my client has outsourced. So, you see. What work they've outsourced? Is it significant? Achha. How much is the materiality? What is the interaction between user entity and service organization? And you come to know the Samir Limited is a subsidiary of Growth Limited. Oh, then it might affect the objectivity of work. So the nature of relationship between user entity and service organization. Super favorite, all time favorite question of the ICAI. Asked so many times in the exam. Okay, and just two more points I'll cover, specifically two more points. Okay, right, one point over there is like, you know, this CA Sparkle. Does he want to do the control testing of growth, but now Growth Limited has done the outsourcing to Samir? Okay, so now CA Sparkle, does he want to do the TOC at Samir company? Yes. So now for this TOC, CS Parkal has three options. First option, ready-made TOC report. First option is the ready-made TOC report. Type 1, type 2 report if available. Life is sought. Second one, you go and perform TOC at service organization. You call Samir and company and tell them tomorrow I'm coming. My client has outsourced to you. I'm coming for control testing. So, visit contact the service organization. And third one, you say, nah, I don't want to go. So, okay, arrange for another auditor to go and perform the TOC at service organization. Right? So, you have three options for doing TOC at service organization. What are the three options? Type 1, type 2 report, ready made. Or you go and perform TOC. You say, I don't want to go. Arrange for another auditor. Okay, and last question, can, can user auditor refer to the name of service auditor in his report? Again, this is a question they asked in the exam. Can CA Sparkle write the name of CA Joy in his report? User auditor is using the work of service auditor. Can CA Sparkle write the name of CA Joy in his report? Unmodified opinion? No reference. Modified opinion, he may make a reference. But even though if he makes a reference, CTBR. What is CTBR? 
continues to be responsible and a user auditor just because you put the name of the service auditor in your report that does not reduce your responsibility you continue to be responsible right you continue to be responsible right so that is ctbr right so this is the three points which i discussed with you smir then three options for TOC and reference in the report, right? These three are from SA402. And regarding 3420, I discussed with, uh, sorry, 3402, I discussed with you the suitable criteria, description design, type 1, description design, OE for the type 2 report, and it's the reasonable assurance. 